welcome to our next Hackathon online session. Thank you for joining. Hello, everybody, wherever you are. Uh, today, we have a special guest from the Helidon team, Dimitri Alexandrov. Hey, Dimitri. Hey, Good hey, hey. Hello. It's a nice pleasure to, it's a great pleasure to be here. The second, by the way, you got an awesome intro. I really like it so much. And uh, to pay respect to our host, I would say, es ist sehr schön, jetzt hier zu sein. So, herzlich willkommen. <laughs> oh, quite nice. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Yeah, uh, Dimitri, maybe uh, you can introduce yourself a little bit and then we, we just can get started. Okay, lovely. Okay, my name is Dimitri. Uh, actually, actually, some information on my next slide. So we actually can start and then I will give this information uh, if you don't mind. So should I share my screen? Yeah. Now you uh, should be able to share your screen. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, lovely. So are you able to see everything? Yes, looks great. Uh, okay, okay. So a little bit, few words about myself. So my name is Dimitri. Um, I'm currently a software developer at Oracle for about less than a month, <laughs> but I'm really honored uh, to be uh, part of this amazing Helidon team. So I'm now uh, with you from uh, the beautiful and sunny city of Sofia, Bulgaria, uh, where I'm most of the time based. Um, so what else can I say? Uh, I'm in the Java world for almost 15 years so far. So I feel quite senior actually at this point. And um, I'm also um, not only working for Java, but I'm trying to move Java forward. So. Uh, with a great team of five, uh, my friends here, six, I know, five, my friends here, we are doing some conferences like uh, the wonderful JPRAM conference happening here in Sofia, and we're moving the Java user group, Bulgarian Java user group, uh, to spread the knowledge as much as possible. And um, now I am a part of Oracle and uh, working on this amazing Helidon project, which I'm going to tell you about. Okay, uh, uh, I think I should go. So, uh, this is me, that's how I look. And of course, since I'm part of Oracle, I have to do this second slide. So this is my first second slide uh, for Safe Harbor. So I, I'm really, really excited to, to say, uh, to, to, uh, to show it. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about Helidon. Helidon project, uh, we will mention a little bit micro profile, the way Helidon supports micro profile. We'll go a little bit deeper, uh, show some examples, uh, say a few words about Hackathon and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. So uh, I'm now not monitoring the chat uh, and uh, I kindly ask our host to, to uh, break me whenever he actually sees a wonderful question uh, relevant to the things I'm talking right now. If it's not relevant, uh, I will try to answer all of your questions uh, at the end of the, uh, of the session. So feel free to ask them. Uh, I'll be really happy to answer them. So what is a Project Helidon? Project Helidon, uh, we call it a set of libraries for developing microservices. Uh, it is available on uh, helidon.io. So uh, I've uh, tried to actually think about, is it a framework? Is it a micro framework? Uh, is it, uh, uh, well, let's say a uh, mm, huge framework. Uh, it's a little bit hard to say what Helidon is. So that's why we call it a set of libraries for writing microservices, because it's not exactly a micro framework, although it's really tiny. So Helidon uh, is a Greek word, uh, and it means swallow. So it's a really graceful bird, which is very fast, which is very maneuverable. And probably all of us have seen this small bird. And as it flies, it's like reminds you a little bit about this microservices world. <laughs> so uh, if we think about it as a bird, microservice bird, it really reminds us. So uh, that's why the project is called Helidon. One of the surprising things about it is, uh, as it is part of Oracle, it is actually open sourced and it is available under Apache 2.0 uh, 
uh, license. So I, I believe it's one of the um, uh, first projects. It's maybe the second project, which is available under Apache 2.0. So as everything which is uh, open source, you're really free to see the code, see what beautiful actually code it is and uh, contribute and uh, uh, extend this functionality we provide. And as I said, it's beautiful and as a bird, it's really small, fast, and uh, I personally really like uh, to use it. So uh, uh, it's really a thin layer uh, built on top of Netty. So um, underneath you will find Netty and the most, well, I would say uh, essential part is that it is uh, cloud native ready. So it has everything you need in the clouds like health metrics, tracing, et cetera, et cetera. We will see this later. Yeah. Uh, last on this slide, but not least, but something we're really proud of, it fully supports uh, graph VM native image. Uh, that means that it can be compiled to really small uh, images and uh, uh, be extremely fast, let us say it like this. Another very, very, um, important part of it is it's we have uh, it available only since Java 11. That means that there are no compromises for um, performance and for Java versions, et cetera, et cetera. We are using it for the most, most advanced technologies. So Halidon is really advanced. It utilizes uh, everything about Java 9 plus world. So as it's really fast, um, you may see that, well, for running a, a small service, most of the time you really don't need much memory. Uh, and probably you will see here that it's not about the JVM run and native image run. It is also about JLink, which is available uh, since Java 9. That means that uh, we are trying to utilize everything uh, available in Java post 9 series. And we're trying to push the versions uh, and our support of this version is as much as possible. That means, as you see the numbers, so the memory consumption is really, really tiny, tiny numbers like mm, tens of megabytes. Uh, the startup time is also like, I, I would say blazing fast, extremely, especially for the native image. Uh, uh, you probably may see that JLink images even provides uh, quite reasonable, um, startup time, although it is uh, actually um, the same JVM. So that means uh, even on JVM, we are pushing the the numbers to, to really small values. And of course, uh, disk footprint is really tiny, like uh, as you see that tens of megabytes, uh, which means that uh, well, all these three values, as I say, as we're cloud native most of the time, uh, this three values like memory uh, usage, disk footprint and startup time, this is something you pay for in the, in the clouds. And that's why uh, these numbers are really brilliant for something uh, you run on your microservices because they actually save your money. So uh, I would start with some history, actually, how did we get to the project Halidon? So it all started with, uh, with uh, about five years ago, so 2015. So there was first ideas about, well, we need a kind of a platform to run our, our microservices on something. And at that point, uh, you know, there was the rise of uh, Spring Boots and uh, this idea of uh, fat jars. Uh, what the server packed within your service, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we definitely were inspired by the Spring guys and uh, started the project Helidon. So it was just first steps uh, to do something internally. Then what we say is that uh, this project uh, was you know, not only US based anymore. So uh, the team was split uh, between Czech, uh, Czechia, or Czech Republic, uh, and uh, the United States. By the way, so most of my team right now is actually in uh, uh, Czech Republic, if you're watching me now, so I would say ahoy. Uh, <clears throat> and now it actually had this wonderful um, 
um, architecture growing. So it had this microkernels and uh, microkernel and several models ready. So it actually start gaining some really some really um, visible shapes, and then uh, the project was renamed to Prime. Uh, 2017, actually, uh, that was another rename of the project. It was job for the clan to actually um, focus our attention that this thing will run in the clouds, and it was very cloud native in all of the uh, all of the um, meaning of these words that I've mentioned previously. Uh, and it was also like mostly written. Uh, in a reactive way. That means that we are caring very much about the resources and resources utilization that we have there uh, it was configurable and secure. Uh, and this actually was the foundation of Helidon uh, SE. That means that Helidon something which is uh, uh, we have as a product right now. 2018, only two years ago, uh, it was finally renamed to Helidon. Yes, this is the project name we know and we will use and we, I believe we'll use. Uh, it started supporting a micro profile. So we'll mention about it uh, but a little bit later. And well, yes, the most uh, vital thing is it was open sourced and moved to GitHub. Now everybody is able to, to, to support it and to um, see the code and to be part of this project and there become a great community over it actually. And uh, 2018, it was a pu first public presentation of it. Uh, although it was like a very, very tiny release and no, not everything was ready. Uh, the very next year, 2019, uh, it was the first ever production ready version of it with all of the support of Microsoft Profile with uh, a lot of work done to make it uh, Ravium native image compatible. And the good part of it is that we became our first, first customers. So uh, there are also, uh, I would, should, should mention the external and internal uh, customers. Uh, that means that uh, uh, I believe some uh, Scandinavian uh, um, companies like Tele2 actually became our customers, but I should say that Oracle internally now uh, moves a um, huge amount of project to Helidon because it is made with advanced Java and we are mostly utilizing the advanced features of uh, Java 11 plus, I would say. So now year 2020, 2020, this amazing COVID year that we have here, but well, crazy year, but we were able to release um, version 2.0. It happened this summer. Actually, it happened on my eyes. I was I was really observing it, and we have a full uh, Graviem native image support. Uh, everything was feature complete, and we actually now have commercial support. That means that. This is a real product suitable for real enterprises, suitable to do real business. Uh, and we are uh, absolutely happy about it. So, and as we gain velocity, uh, we are really happy that um, we now have um, even more micro profile support. It means that not only uh, the, 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 the specs uh, that are uh, part of it, but also some, some specs that are not officially part of micro profile yet are being supported. We have stability and performance. We are really working hard to make it really fast and, uh, and really performant and really stable. And as I said, uh, uh, this is like Apache 2.0, it's available on GitHub. So whenever you have any ideas, just click on that link and uh, you will uh, definitely find response. So let us dive in a little bit into product. So what is Helidon? Actually Helidon, as I told you, it is based on Netty. So Netty is underneath everything. Then uh, there is something called Helidon SE. And this is the reactive part of it. So it's a pure Java, uh, which uh, um, without any magic, I would say it like this without any um, reflections without mostly no uh, annotations does the work does the real work and then 
on the top of it comes the micro profile part of it. So it, it drops what is Helidon underneath uh, and uh, provides us a very suitable, nice, and uh, um, I would say um, comfortable way to use um, Helidon as it base micro profile. As I say base and micro profile, let us, let us actually have a look what a micro profile is. I believe that um, many of us know what micro profile is, so at least uh, I would say it, it is time to know what micro profile is. You can't ignore this massive movement of, uh, of uh, mm, several enterprises which formed um, a community to write specifications for enterprise Java microservices. Actually, I was quite happy because it was rising in my eyes. So I was able to see the first release, what happened in 2016. It had only three specs, which are actually part of, uh, of uh, Java EE or Jakarta EE, like CDI, uh, JSONP and uh, uh, JAXRS. Uh, and now it actually grows to, to uh, I believe, about 12 specs. And uh, what, what is important to know about it, it is a specs uh, community specification. That means that uh, many participants like Oracle, Red Hat, uh, Tommy Tribe, uh, Payara, um, even Microsoft, uh, uh, which is like kind of amazing for Java world, although Microsoft pushing very much in this direction. Uh, they are all caring about specification. Now, everyone of this particular have their own products uh, which implement those specifications. And um, this way, uh, we are making a very standardized software, which is very portable and which is very, uh, I would say, predictable in terms of how would you use it. Uh, so micro profile has four releases per year and uh, every year there is a version of it. So it looks kind of uh, this way right now. Oops, yes, this way right now. So this specification were made is to run, I would say especially for microservices world. Uh, they all carry about good microservices uh, life in the clouds and uh, their observability, their um, security, uh, their um, uh, traceability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you probably see now there are like um, um, CDI is still there, JSON, both JSON specification to carry about JSON parsing, uh, JAXRS for. For, for actually uh, doing the um, um, the rest uh, the rest of the work, <laughs> the rest endpoints, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The metric fault tolerance, health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We will now have a look actually at it. And as you probably may see, Helidon does support um, this specifications, as he has uh, all of this like configurations, metrics. Uh, uh, API, open API, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it also takes some of the specifications which are part of a Jakarta E uh, to form the full support of MicroProfile 3.3. Uh, we also have some specifications like Course and gRPC, which are not yet part of a, of uh, of MP, but we do support them because they are quite required in the community. And uh, we will now call them Helidon specific, but we do support them. So as you probably see, uh, we have uh, all necessary to run uh, and support modern worlds of micro microservices uh, and to be able to run them uh, in a very uh, good manner. So what is what is important in, uh, in, uh, in, in the microservices world, especially cloud native microservices world. So I a little bit will uh, go through the specification for those people who actually are not sure. So first of all, it's the configuration. That means that uh, if we fully support micro profile config, um, it means that everything which is 
uh, in a standard way configurable uh, will run on our server. So uh, that means that all the configuration done on maybe other machines will be easily portable to our our uh, runtime and our, our libraries will definitely read it correctly. Uh, we do support health checks, of course, because uh, now, you know, you see when your system is actually distributed, there should be a way, uh, well, let's call it automatic way to uh, find actually what is uh, running and what is not running. Should it be restarted and not, or maybe just discarded at this point? Uh, it's not a monitoring solution for human operators, so it's it's done for automatic. It's also fully portable, but for uh, for um, observability, we have the micro profile metrics, which we fully support. And the good thing is that uh, so we provide it in a, a de facto standard, which is called the Prometheus, uh, which actually does the collection of the metrics uh data models etc cetera, etc cetera. and um uh for visualization you can use everything like grafana uh or maybe i'm not sure if there's anything else by the way <laughs> so uh and it's this micro profile that means it's a standard that means that everything you wrote will be in a standard way running on our machines as well on our helidon uh environments um we do support all the scopes. Uh, that means that we have the scope of uh, uh, vendor specific, like well, then we have an application specific metrics, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It means that I would say a little bit ahead of time that uh, um, in uh, when we do uh, integrate with other environments like databases or uh, clouds, et cetera, et cetera, we are able to expose their metrics via these three scopes, like vendor specific, application specific. And once again, it's part of the micro profile, so we do completely support it. As microservices, each call may use many microservices, we absolutely do support open tracing, uh, my micro, micro profile uh, tracing. That means that you can trace your application via Zip or Jaeger uh, to see how the actually actually your request propagates and find bottlenecks if you need, for example. Definitely fault tolerance, once again, as part of a, a micro profile. Everything like circuit breakers, fault breaks, bulkheads, asynchronous calls uh, are, are supported. That means you just have to declare on your Mac that this thing has to be like, for example, called three or four times, retry it, and then it just fall back to some other methods. We absolutely do support it. Uh, and of course, uh, we our microservices not only provide data, but it also consume data. So we have the rest clients as well. To document everything, we have open API. So that means that if you type in slash open API, you will have everything uh, uh, provided as APIs. But let us stop you now observing uh, micro profile. Show me the code. <laughs> Famous man said, talking is cheap, show me the code. So how we actually can start coding with uh, with um, micro with um, Helidon. So a good way maybe is to go to micro profile starter page and create our own poem with uh, selecting a Peladon. So it will create everything we need to start coding. But Peladon, uh, we want to make life easier for everyone. So that's why we created a special CLI, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, that will help us do our job. So let us go into uh, the website and see, by the way, I with this clicking, I just wanted to show you that uh, um, Halidon has amazing help page with almost everything about Halidon, MPSE, example, fault tolerance. Uh, it's, it's really about everything. You got examples which are in a wonderful way documented, in a beautiful way documented, and you definitely should see it. So uh, 
as I clicked on the link in my presentation, but I've also done my homework. So I've downloaded uh, downloaded uh, the Helidon application, which by the way is interesting because it's not like um, something like a standalone application. It's a native image built of some, uh, with have heavily usage of, uh, of uh, Maven. So it really uh, is uh, pure Java with, uh, um, which help us a lot to do our jobs and automate our jobs. So uh, I, I think you can see my screen right now. So I created a folder. Let us create a small project with the use of this application. So we just type in Helidon and say in it. So we want a project, start a project. And now we actually, so you see that's the application. Helidon is now version 2.120. And it's just as what is the flavor we want to do? We want to do the micro profile way. So we will click to, and we would like to create like quick starter. That means that a small uh, MP project, which is a good demonstration um, uh, code in it. So we will use this one. Uh, there's also, by the way, bare, that means minimal. So if you start your own project from scratch, there'll be nothing there, but it will be still a good foundation. And there is a database. Uh, we will come to it a little bit a little bit later. So we click, we, we say two. We will call it quick start. Uh, so my computer is buzz and uh, the artifact ID snapshot. Uh, and probably that will be our package name. Development loop. Oh, this is interesting, but let us first see the code and then we come to this this fantastic option of it. So uh, let us go to quick start. So we've created a directory. Uh, there's everything we need uh, for this uh, quick start query. So we will open our favorite EDE uh, to see actually what we have. Okay, so let it start. It's starting my next screen. Just give me a second. Lovely. Uh, now, uh, Zoom takes a lot of my resources and my machine, so it really happens a little bit slow, as you may see. But if you run it without Zoom, it will it will be just uh, just very fast, just blazingly fast. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, this application created for us uh, this uh, this common line application created us for a small. Uh, REST application, which is extremely easy. It's like a greeting service for us. Uh, and you see only two, two small um, uh, classes with quite, uh, I, I believe you can see this from my screen. I will zoom a little bit with uh, very, very uh, familiar annotations like path, uh, requested, injects, get, produces, everything. This is micro profile. That means that this is absolutely standard way. You can just get this code and put it on maybe other machine that, that supports machine. I mean, other server or other framework which supports micro profile and it will definitely run. Then you get the resource and then you have the provider actually. And that is probably it. So uh, we have our configuration. So we do have configuration, which is a micro profile configuration. Uh, it is the file and let us see how it works. But how it works actually is interesting uh, because what you can do, you can just mave it, package it, but let us try it with Helidon application. So we type Helidon, Helidon built and it will do the job for us. I mean, it will actually call the Maven, do the artifacts, uh, do the tests. Uh, it may take some time because it actually runs our server. Then it package everything. And what do we have? So let us say target. And here we have a fully functional jar, which is quite small. Uh, 
to run our application. You see, it's only uh, several several kilobytes, by the way, just because we are most of the time producing hollow jars. A hollow jars that means it actually separates the code from the libraries to utilize the Docker way of the, of building it. Uh, as you probably may see, uh, we have Docker files for different mills. That means that you can build your application inside of a Docker machine. So, for example, if you want to build it for Linux from Mac, you can just utilize Docker for it. And the good part of it is it, uh, you know, gets all the dependencies, you know, the layered uh, nature of, uh, of Docker file system. It fully utilizes it. Um, that means that uh, it only will change a tiny part of it. So the first build will be big one to download, to pull all of the dependencies and pull it inside the library. By the way, uh, I'm just interested how much the library uh, size is. Uh, so I'll get target and libraries. So it's only 15 max. So everything about this application, 15 max plus uh, this uh, eight kilobytes of our code. And um, for Docker, it will always just rebuild your code. So it will be blazingly fast. It will not pull the libraries and run it there. So, but I want to run it. So it's like Java minus jar, uh, jar, then targets, and then quick starter. Okay, only, well, my machine is still under pressure for, for it too, but look, it's only several seconds and we are up and running. I will start another console. You see the good part of it that we have a readme file, which actually gives you some, uh, some examples what is actually happening. So if we just copy paste it, uh, I'm hope, I hope you can read my screen, by the way, uh, uh, you can read my screen. Okay, lovely. So we just say, hello world. Yes, we want to greet Joe, for example. You may probably, I'm not going to dive into this uh, this example very much, but uh, it's really easy to read. We can greet Joe. Lovely, but we are developers. We don't want to, you know, Start, restart, build jars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Helidump provides you this magic, uh, which is the def uh, uh, option of Helidon common line utility. So when you type in def, what it will do, it will build your code and start actually looking for changes in your files uh, and. Whenever you find some change, it will help us uh, and it rebuild everything. So you don't need to to do uh, uh, to do it yourself. Let us try change something. Like I would say greeting. I would well hello. We can say not hello, but we can say guten Abend. Oops, sorry. Uh, right button. Abend. Yes, and save it. Yes, and look, it, it just recognized that our files have changed and it just grabbed them. Let us try have a look. Uh, like for example, if you greet micro streams, what is the right way? Micro stream or micro streams? Micro stream, <laughs> okay. Yes, we will read and what we see, Guten Abend microstream. So this application really helps us and helps our, our ED do the job. By the way, uh, I'm quite happy that uh, with this application, but for example, uh, IntelliJ IDEA guys, I'm really grateful to them, provide you uh, some, some, some tooling for uh, uh, for Helidon as well. So if you time in endpoints, um, it will recognize them. I really hope uh, it will, it may, yeah, look at this. It, it requires some time actually, but you will see this greet endpoints, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, 
idea itself also provides you um, some tooling for this. So quite, quite a small application and it runs perfectly and you see how easy it is to start and you see you have all the tooling set for you to start easy and start really fast. So uh, let us just stop to, to not, not to have problems with our ports at some time because you know, <laughs> at some point you cannot build without the ports. Okay, so, so what do we have right now? So if you start project, just type on that link and uh, it will really help you a lot. Yes, but as I say now, welcome to the danger zone. You see, it was so fluffy and easy to start working with uh, with Helidon, but that's not all. Um, this danger thing, as I call it, is called Helidon SE, or at some point it will become Helidon Reactive APIs. What does that actually mean? So he's, as I was talking, so uh, Helidon is a micro profile based framework, but to run uh, this micro profile underneath it, you will have uh, a set of libraries, reactive libraries, which actually do the work without all the CDI magic, without all the annotations, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So instead of closing it into itself, like for example, to do internal stuff, uh, we are quite happy that we actually exposed it to the world. That means that Actually, this Helidon Reactive, so Helidon SE, is also available for developers. Uh, it's that you can use it whenever you find that you don't need the magic and you really want to have some uh, some uh, performance, not to lose it on on uh, uh, calls like CDI calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. That's why we call it two flavors of Helidon at some point, but actually, what is it about? So Helidon MP is a uh, um, micro profile and Helidon SE is a reactive, not blocking microphone framework, exactly in terms of micro framework as you find it in, uh, in, uh, in the Wikipedia page. As Helidon is fast, Helidon SE is extremely fast <laughs> because you don't lose time for any, any, uh, um, the say, um, uh, runtime calls. So it's a pure Java with the, almost no annotations. I probably see maybe some override annotations only there. <laughs> yes. And if Helidon, as we saw, has small footprints, only tens of megabytes, as it is extremely tiny because it really does not take uh, all of this CDI stuff, uh, all the, all the, no, uh, a layer of uh, making comfortable uh, coding for us. It just don't take it. It's, it's just pure Java. And unlike, you know, uh, in Helidon MP, which is EE style APIs, like with all of the annotations, it's like a functional, pure functional APIs, um, which are transparent and no dependency injection, et cetera, et cetera. So if we, if, we, if we see the code itself, actually, uh, in Helidon MP, so we get this annotations like path and get. Here on the left side, you will have the SE way of doing it, which is like pure Java, like you get routing, you get response request, and it just web server create and start, and it will work and it will be blazingly fast. Um, what is good about it? Um, once again, it's tiny, it has functional APIs. You got the full control with no annotations. You really know what is happening because you could just read the code and what is written in the code, you will have it. This is something I would call um, in, in the example later. So it does support, it does have the components actually that, that do uh, stay underneath the MP implementation. So it still has, security, health checks, metrics, tracing, uh, like WebSocket stuff. Uh, there are some experimental stuff there like reactive stream and reactive messages and DB client, which is like uh, one or something which you are proud of uh, about. The reactive uh, 
why we dream, why experiment. So because um, if they're still not stabilized, that means that something may change in the APIs, but they're already working and they're already doing the job. So, and as I said, uh, DB clients, this is a very interesting way uh, we talk to databases because, well, uh, as you know, microservices stay away mostly by the, by the, by the design or by the um, understanding what a microservices is, we're still communicating to databases to, uh, to store some state. And Helidon has its own DB clients, which is uh, what we're proud of is reactive and not blocking. Uh, it supports other JDBC drivers. Um, and actually it makes blocking JDBC drivers non-blocking because it has its own executor services, which runs some separate threads. And so that's why um, it drops the blocking drivers and provides you the, the way to use them in a blocking reactive way, which Helidon SE is actually by design using for everything. Wonderful thing that it still use metrics, tracing, and health checks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it has its own web clients, um, which is uh, the way, like uh, in micro profile words. Um, it also can consume uh, consume services, and it does it in a reactive and non-blocking fashion. Actually, it drops uh, it is dropped. Uh, uh, the, the MP uh, web client is actually wrapped under this thing. And we are really happy that we have uh, reactive streams and messaging because, you know, uh, if your application does not use Kafka now these days or Oracle streaming, you just, uh, well, people say, what is your actually application doing? We are having them. We are, we have them. We uh, fully respect the back pressure and everything because actually uh, for reactive streams, we are not using other projects like Rx, Java or Reactor, but we are implementing our own, uh, um, our own implementation for that. And uh, this is quite handy. That means that everything you have in SE is really, really small and tiny. And why I'm saying that is that now we are really beating the performance uh, um, like other competitors here. And uh, that means that we put a huge effort to make them really fast. And this, uh, and this, uh, and this uh, um, uh, image you see, the main thing is small operations. So more operations, the best. That means that sometimes the performance is twice as high as, as uh, uh, by the other guys. And I have prepared a small demo for you. Uh, let me, uh, let me just switch to, uh, uh, no, not this one. So let me switch to, uh, to the code. Um, by the way, I just wanted to mention that in, in uh, SE, the MP examples, we also do have metrics and health checks available from, from, from the start. So we don't need this anymore. Let me close it. Let me close it. And I have prepared a small example, uh, like this example uh, is utilizing MicroStream. Yes, and it's written in SE application. So let us uh, let us uh, use our idea to to run it actually and see how it's working. So, what you will see, uh, this is now a little bit different style of coding. So this is the SE style of coding. You will see that we still have a main class and main method, which actually starts a server. And you'll probably see that uh, we will have a web server. We can configure it in uh, in reactive uh, in um, in a builder using builder patterns actually. So it's, it's, it's very handy because we can add media support, routings, headers and sockets, for example, and it's quite readable. And then we actually started 
and you may see that it's very, very asynchronous. So we have a lot of uh, completable futures here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the code is very reactive. Uh, and then, um, as you probably saw, we can maybe register health and metrics and all of that stuff. So that means that we do have support, and we do this in uh, in a, in a, in a uh, I would say. Uh, pure Java way, you don't see any annotations. And uh, as I said, uh, we will try to persist some, some, uh, some, some items here. So I've created a special microstream service, which uses microstream uh, um, database, which is embedded. So uh, the only thing I actually done is that I'm using some uh, repos and I get this uh, microstreams uh, binaries here, uh, and as it's pure Java, I just use the classes. So here I got some uh, embedded storage with start. Uh, there is a trick for native image. Huge thanks to the guys who helped me set it up. This is for native image. This is quite 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 uh, important. And actually, uh, we have to implement a service so that our Headed on as he could consider this as a service. And the only thing that actually it has is an update function, which gets some rules and assigns a functions to that rules. Like for example, get all items, uh, set an item, add new item, or delete something. And it is extremely simple. Like we got the items, we just put it in, we just get the items, put inside, uh, add new item here, like for example, and, um, and probably that's it. So the code will be available on uh, on the GitHub for you. And I would really like, I pre-built it for you. So um, there is all already a built-in example. So we can use it like Java minus jar minus jar jar to run it. So we will go to target and then to go to microstream example jar. You see, um, it is blazingly fast. It's already running. So I just typed in and it's running. Uh, so I created a scratch file for you. Uh, we can just see what items do we have in the database right now. So what two items like hello world, then we put in adding a helidon and say like helidon, hello world helidon. So it's persisted with, uh, with uh, microstreams. We delete something and now it says just hello world. And we can just run what is the example like world so we can get it. Find an interesting thing that actually here is the persistent uh, persistent data. <laughs> you may probably recognize it, uh, the guys from from uh, from uh, from microstreams. So this is the persistent data. Uh, it has its um, um, it's it, it's working. But uh, what a good thing about it is we don't have any magic here. So let let me just uh, stop stop the service. So I've pre-built a native image. That means that our Helidon with microstreams uh, together can build a native image and run completely in native way. So it, it, it took some time. That's why I'm not demonstrating it. But on my machine, it took me about seven or eight minutes to build. Um, and uh, so I just get target and then get the executable file. It's a pure executable. There's no JVM in it, nothing. We just run it. Uh, and you see, it's, it's, it's less than, than, than fractures of seconds to start. And if we run the same examples, like for example, uh, we will see the same hello world stuff. Um, we can put some items there. By the way, it's working on the same database here. And we, we then can delete something, uh, as you see, and then we can get something. This is native image. And what we can see that 
it did work, which is huge thanks for the guy who actually had helped me a lot. So to do this, uh, there's some tricks, uh, like for example, adding uh, uh, an adapter to to to, uh, to to set it up, and there's some uh, some uh, native image like reflect and click to to do all the job. So as you see, it's running. It's fractures of second. It's tiny. And by the way, let us have a look of a uh, of the uh, of the footprint as we have it. Okay, let me just stop it. Yes, it did stop. So if we go to uh, target. So the full example is 11K with libraries of about 20 megabytes, I would say. And uh, 51 megabytes is the full example, which is a native image. So look, it's really tight. <laughs> so I'm really happy about it. So that's how it looks like. And by the way, here you got a complete documentation once again for SE. Everything you need to know about like, uh, like, uh, DB client, how you can start everything you know how to work with the health checks. So you have the health checks for for your uh, service. What do you need to include and how you need to register and run them? Everything is described nicely. So don't hesitate to look at it. So that's what I want to say. So heli.mp, we can imagine it like a jetliner, which is designed to run smoothly, carry people, provide comfort, and um, make our development easy and uh, um, I would say once again comfortable. As Helidon SC is, is, is something like a fighter jet in this case, it's very maneuverable. You can do everything. Uh, as I talked to some, some, uh, some of my friends who actually tried, uh, tried the API, so uh, uh, one of the guys from uh, from NOPG say, God, it's so uh, so easy to use this uh, reactive uh, API. So you just put the dot and you got the list of methods, as I showed you, that uh, actually helps you develop in a very intuitive way. That's why I really like it about, uh, about Helidon SE. And it really gives you performance. So uh, if you need a portable code, you switch to MP the good way of comfortable way of doing it. It is still blazingly fast, but it still has some overhead. If you need something really performant, uh, really easy to build for native image, et cetera, et cetera, um, use Helidon C. Although there's a big effort done from our site to ensure that everything with MP from our site is also native image uh, compatible. So you just choose your flavor and you choose your, um, your way of doing it. Do you need performance or do you need comfortable or do you need portability? Helidon does provide you all of this, all of these features, but don't forget about it. So <laughs> great power, great responsibility. As I told you to build our applications, we provide three method, methods since we are Java 9 plus. That means we have a whole of a jar because third body dependencies are stored separately to take advantage of Docker layering. We have JLink. That means that we are able to optimize the GRE, which, are, which is actually shipped with your product to be really small. And as you probably saw, it really uh, uh, ensures that your application will run fast. You won't run any components that are not used. So first of all, you get uh, optimizations for, uh, for uh, size of image and then you have optimizations for start of that image and of course gravium image so it's the fastest it does have some code restrictions uh front time operations but it's it's really i would say uh blazingly fast and since helidon is very small this combination makes it like a, a i can't find the right word to explain how fantastic it is <laughs> Uh, yes, disk footprint is really small. Once again, back to the graphics. So as you see, uh, this is something you will pay in the cloud for the, the disk, the, the back bytes that, you, that I use. And as you see, the footprints are really, really small, like amazingly small. But uh, if you want to play more with uh, with Helidon and 
actually uh, see all of its features. These small examples, which are provided by default from, uh, from, from the CLI, are uh, kind of really small. And here is a very good example, like sock shop. It's like a pet, pet clinic, but it's like sock shops, which I uh, recommend you to see. And there's a big description about everything you can do with Helidon. Uh, just reviewing it will take us several hours. So uh, if you're interested, you can go with the quick starters, which are available for you with the command line. And then you can check the, the stock shop just to see how, how it is. How. For our application that I wrote to you, so these are the microstream examples. I show you only the SE example, SE, which means with pure Java. But in a very same way, I uh, integrated the uh, microstreams uh, embedded server into uh, a micro micro profile example, and uh, you just can can see and use it and can play with it. So it does absolutely the same job, but with the magic of micro profile and the code is really portable. And if you want to discover more, a good idea is to visit the Hello.io site. We do write articles. And what is good, so we, for, 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 for people who like visual presentation, we do have a YouTube channel where uh, my colleagues, wonderful colleagues, post their videos so you can really see how we do this. The, it's, it, it's been, I believe, oh, no, uh, new videos have been uploaded quite often, so join us there. And once again, I'm really excited to be part of this, this hackathon that we have right now. Um, there is an amazing budget of uh, $20,000 price and you can do something with Halidon and MicroStreams together uh, and win amazing $2,500. Uh, this is actually information. This information will be available from uh, from uh, our hosts, and uh, uh, play with it. Do something. As I said, I provided a very very easy example of uh, of um, some kind of persistent provided by MicroStream, just not to make it complicated, just to let you play with it and provide a good way of uh, using MicroStream such as Helidon. Uh, from my perspective, since you know Helidon is a micro, a micro framework, but we still love integrations with other products. Maybe you can play with it and provide an integration and then you will not just provide an integration help make this world a better place like MicroStreams will held it on, but you will also be rewarded for this. As you probably see, there's also a GraalVM uh, um, special price. That's what I say that my my good colleague, Oleg Shalife, uh, will do his session about uh, Graal Knight of Image and Polyglot, uh, uh, I believe later on yeah, 1st of December. So there is uh, a URL you can check uh, and definitely joined his session because he does them really great. And uh, one thing I wanted to say is that thank you very much. I really hoped that you liked Helidon and I really encourage you to play with it. You got all the examples, you got all the um, um, applications, not applications, health methods to make, health methods to help keep you really start fast uh, with your with your development once again you got the MP way which is like um, portable uh, and uh, um, standardized way of doing stuff and you have the SE way which is uh, blazing fast with reactive apis very intuitive by the way you can try them and uh, that's why um, you choose your own way to develop uh, we did not um, how you say put on any any borders so you're able to use all of the all of the um, ways to do this so the fast way or the standard way and play uh, we really want to see your uh, your applications so there's a jury of us waiting for your applications and uh, we can't wait to to find a wonderful combination of uh, of microstreams and Helidon and we are here to support you at any time.
So I hope uh, it was useful for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dimitri. This was really a great presentation. And uh, yeah, the, I, I think here the audience uh, loved the presentation. You have uh, really very great um, comments here in the chat. Uh, very interesting, great presentation, great session. Uh, and here we have a uh, yeah, very cool question. Must be a, a fan already of Helidon. So if MicroStream is integrated with Helidon, it would become the most powerful framework ever. What do you think, Dimitri? I've, I've already tried it, by the way. So I, uh, as I was playing with it and I was preparing, doing my homework for this, for this, for this, um, this session, you see, you are fast. You are extremely fast. Helidon is extremely fast. We both provide very, very tiny footprint. So I, I believe this guy is completely right saying that it will become just like amazing. Wow. Yeah, great answer. Yeah, guys, uh, any, any further question? Well, let me see. Let me see what we have. I also can read the chat right now. Uh, so, um, that's a good question, by the way, the last one for uh, Java E developer, where should I start? I believe that um, <clears throat> MP will be a familiar place for you because you already know the annotations, most of them. So, uh, and you will receive a really tiny framework doing the, doing the stuff. And as you feel the flavor of it, the run of it, definitely switch to SE and see how it's done there because uh, uh, it's really it's really nice to to find similarities and really nice to see how how easy it is to use the se way and um i believe um first mp as a, a as an enterprise developer then se and then you'll become the master of the world because it's very 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 powerful okay so let me see maybe other questions uh yes we will provide thank you very much for the demo Thank you for, 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 for saying an amazing talk. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, <clears throat> demo, yes, as I saw in my presentation, I believe this presentation will be available. So I will just uh, submit it to, to, uh, uh, to MicroStreams and I will publish it. Okay, so if MicroStream, yes, powerful. And yes, thank you so much though. I guess these are the questions. Feel free to uh, uh, benefits of. Oh yes, Micronaut and Helidon. Yes, uh, you see, uh, Micronaut is amazing framework as well. Uh, that means uh, that uh, everything they do, I, I just you know completely uh, kudos to those guys. What uh, what is the benefit for for Helidon? We do provide. Uh, a standardized way of doing it. So we do have this SE way of, we expose the SE, which is the reactive reactive uh, uh, APIs for you to use, but we still have this MP cover, micro profile cover. That means if you write the code, it will be portable. That means that, um, <clears throat> uh, it will be really portable, it will be really fast, and it will be standard code. Yes, which is a huge benefit if you choose to move somewhere or you want to make it like really, really standard way of doing things. So I see question from Stefan, hello, my friend, uh, is about Quarkus. So Quarkus, uh, it's an amazing machine as well, but there is one benefit uh, that uh, actually uh, I've experienced myself uh, when I was playing with uh, with different integrations with uh, with uh, Helidon. Uh, Quarkus does support full CDI. That means that uh, unlike, for example, uh, uh, Quarkus, which has some limited ca capabilities uh, by using Quark, which is blazing fast, but but it's not a full uh, full. Uh, support we have a full cdi support that means that if you have a standard piece of code like a cdi extension you just drop it in and it runs uh, we have this example uh, of uh, neo4j integrations so, so um, 
wonderful wonderful fellow Michael Siemens we are playing together we are now doing it in a doing the integration and we're playing with it and he just said okay i got a cdi which is designed for different purposes we just dropped it in and it worked out of the box we were just both of us were standing like amazing amazed how how, how nice it is so um so uh i believe uh this is one of the of the of the powers of, of Kelly Don, and you should consider it if you take the business decision to use it I hope this answered your question. There are a lot of them, but this one is like crucial for me at least. Thanks again, Dimitri, for your time. It was really a great presentation. We all loved it. And yeah, uh, to the audience, thank you all for joining. Uh, thank you for your time. See you on Thursday. Um, there is a, another MicroStream session about uh, serialization. And after this, uh, um, session about serialization with Florian. Uh, we have the weekly Q&A. See you. Um, yeah, thank you for joining again and goodbye. Thank you, thank you for this hosting. Thank you so much.